hospitable American Mid-South. Touchdown in the land of the Delta Blues. The home of the king. For the kings of offense in 2004 in college football. Nobody's done it like Boise State and Louisville. On target all season long, and they've arrived here in Memphis. But one of the storylines for the Louisville side has taken a little bit of the attention away from these shootout offenses in the 2004 AutoZone Liberty Bowl. As the Broncos of Boise State become the first of the five teams trying to complete the perfect college football season of 04 against the eighth ranked Louisville Cardinals. As you know, nobody does it like Stefan LaForge and the rest of the Louisville offense. Tops in the nation, record setting over 50 each of their last five. Jared Zabransky and Boise State right in their shadow, but taking a back seat to no one. Kirk Herbstreit will join us and we'll kick it off from Memphis in a moment. How bad does Boise State want it? How bad do you want the first perfect Division 1A season in school history? From Idaho, the Broncos take the field here in Memphis. A lot of buildup. The atmosphere is great. We're glad to have you with us. Mike Tirico, Kirk Herbstreit, you've already heard from Jill Arrington. She's back with us momentarily. Obviously, they're the best scoring teams in the country, which means they're pretty darn good offensive systems. But I don't care what system you have, you need the people. And these guys have the people to get it done. Well, everybody's been waiting to see this bowl game, and it's because of the offensive play. But to be able to put up over 50 points a game and over 500 yards of offense, you have to have consistency, which means you have to have great play from the quarterback. And that's what both these teams have been able to have this year. Stephon LaFours has done a great job of blocking out distractions. A talk of the freshman, Brian Brom, and right now is on a, an unbelievable season looks to finish it off. Jared Zabransky to me has been one of the biggest surprises this year in all the college football. He stepped in. They lost their starter last year, Ryan Dinwiddie. It didn't miss a beat offensively. They're doing it a little bit differently this year with Zabransky. Combination of running and throwing and that combination from Zabransky will be so crucial tonight for Boise State. Great offenses. If you had to rank them one through four, which defense would be third and fourth? Because the offenses are one, two of the units coming in. Which defense has to play the big game to win the game? Well, I think Louisville's defense has been more consistent, especially late in the year, and they've got great athletic ability. I think Boise State's defense is going to have to step up. Mm -hmm. Their style of defense that Boise plays is a lot of man coverage. Stephon LaFour is going to be sitting back there licking his chops, <laughs> looking forward to facing man coverage. If they're going to play that, which is what they do, they better play their best game of the year to slow down Louisville. And Jill Arrington, that means pressure on a couple of people in the building here this afternoon. That's absolute, absolutely right, you guys. The defenses. These two defenses have been hearing all month about this being an offensive shootout, and I talked to the two defensive coordinators. They said they are definitely using that as motivation. These defenses are taking that very personally, saying, we've got a lot of pride, and we've helped both of our teams win a lot of games this year. I talked to uh, Andy Avalos, a linebacker at Boise State, and he said, you know what? We've gone against the number two offense all season long in practice. There is nothing that we're going to see we haven't seen before. But you're right, Mike. Whoever defenses steps up, that's who's going to win this ball game. Storylines are very simple. Louisville trying for its best finish ever in terms of ranking and record. Boise for the perfect season. Up we go from Memphis. Louisville the first chance to touch it. Kick off a turn by Henry Douglas. Harry Douglas takes it out to the 24-yard line. So here come the cards led by Stefan LaForge. You want to talk about respect? They've tried to replace this guy a couple of times with Mr. Kentucky in football. They have it. LaFour's a lefty whose parents are hearing impaired. He was the only person, and you may know the story, it's been told so often, the only person in his family who has the gift of hearing. He has used that leadership and the great visual communication with his excellent football ability to be one of the top quarterbacks statistically this season that we've seen in the game in a while. Holby Smith is the lone back, the first to touch it. He gains about six yards out to the 30-yard line. Let's check the Louisville starting lineups. Eric Shelton will be in the backfield. They went with Smith on the first carry. Russell, Jones, Barnage, and McCauley as they line up up front. They'll have so many people touch the ball. Travis Lefew is their best lineman. He's the junior on the left side. Spitz was second team. When they need to make something happen on offense, they go to that side. Bobby Petrino is the mastermind. His brother Paul is the offensive coordinator. But Bobby's the one calling the shots for this offense. The fours gets it away. High and almost intercepted by Cam Hall. 
That junior free safety out of Kennewick, Washington. So one first down gained. But three stops by Boise, and Louisville will punt it away. Well, let's give Boise State a lot of credit, a lot of buildup, and a lot of hype about the two offenses coming into this game. And the first series of the game, nice job by Hall of Reading, making the read to come up and knock that ball away. And also, they got some pressure that time on LaFours. Brent Moody, the punter, and rolled back to him. He's chasing it down. Two Boise players on him. He rolls and picks it on a run like a rugby kick. Lucky to get it back past the original line of scrimmage. This could have been worse, but it will be only a nine-yard punt. Not the fault to the kicker, but the long snapper. Mike, give Moody, I'll tell you, how lucky is this guy that he's left-footed? He goes back to try to pick up this football. I thought he was thinking about knocking out of the back of the end zone. He is very, very fortunate to be left-footed because of the way he was chasing the ball, allowed him to turn and at least get the football out of there. The bad snap came from Matt Webb, the sophomore. And remember, Kirk, the punter, Moody, has been seen hundreds of times on TV since our Thursday night game down in the Orange Bowl. He was the one who Devin Hester faked onto his bottom on that punt return comeback in the only Louisville loss of the year. So here's Jared Zabransky. Great numbers, but only the second team all whack performer. Still a great season. Looking up top right away. Wide open. Hold in by Beatty. And Lawrence takes it out to the 20 yard line. A pickup of 27 for the senior. It's just the way Zabransky wants to get the game started. Play action, which is what he's most comfortable with. And Louisville's secondary that time, I think they got suckered in a little bit with the play action. There's confusion here on the first series, and that's what Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator from Louisville, told us. They need to recognize so many different formations and react. First down design run for Zabransky is pulled down at the 18-yard line. He's a good runner. Bobby LeFew made the tackle up front. Here are the starting lineups for Boise. Lee Marks, one of the running backs by committee, but they're very good. Andy Weldon, Dryson James, T.J. Acre, 11 and 89. They're big play guys at receiver. Up front, Darren College is from the North Pole. North Pole, <laughs> Alaska. He's an NFL prospect, first team all-conference. Clayton at Adams, the center. Former walk-on, second team all-conference. Chris Peterson's the offensive coordinator. He was the quarterback at Division II, Cal Davis, when Dan Hawkins was an assistant. Third and nine, no backs. Pressured. Zabransky brought down at the 31-yard line. Elvis Doomerville. Who else in Memphis but Elvis making the first push to join Brett Johnson for a 12-yard loss? Well, Doomerville is able to come up and help out, Mike, but it was really the package, the blitz from the outside, putting as much pressure once you get a third and long. The safety that time, Brent Johnson, came free and allowed the, uh, the pressure to come from the defensive line from Doomerville. Tyler Jones was a finalist for the Groza Award, an excellent kicker. Super game with the nation from 48 yards. Hooking in and good. Behind Mike Nugent from Ohio State, as good a kicker as you'll find in the nation. Jones, good. First points of an expected shootout for the guys from Potato Country. AutoZone, a local company here. First year of a long term agreement with the Liberty Bowl. There is the man who's uh, feeling the worst right now in the stadium, Matt Webb, who's snapped on the punt, led to the great field position, allowing Tyler Jones to kick the field goal for Boise State. This kick's going to work out perfect. It's not going to go out of bounds. And Harry Douglas is hemmed in. But he breaks free. Harry Douglas on the run. Good cutback. And Jones, the kicker, brings him down at the Boise 48. I'll take that back. This isn't going to work out so well. A return of 49. How many times do you see this, whether it's a punt or a rare kickoff like this, where the ball looks like you got a chance to get down and, and cover it? Everybody gets out of their lanes. You, you want to give Louisville some compliments for the blocking, but really it was Boise State getting out of their lanes and then just pure athletic ability and great speed. And that, that's some nice block there early to set it up, but it's just that's fundamental breakdown. Getting excited, seeing the football rolling on the ground, thinking you might be able to check them down there and chase it. Option look with LaFours. He keeps a good running quarterback, Stephon LaFours. Hold out of bounds at the 34 yard line. A first down pickup of 14. Austin Smith on the tackle. 
That's what LaForce brings to the table. A lot of talk about his throwing and what he's done this year as far as his efficiency, but this is what separates him from a lot of quarterbacks. He's a very tough competitor. He's got great quickness, and he's very comfortable, Mike, more importantly, in running the option, whether it's under center or, or it's from the shotgun. And as a defensive coordinator, when you have a quarterback that can hurt you throwing and running, boy, it's, it's, it's very difficult to be able to contain it. A lot of those Dave Ragone yards were running for his wife behind a weak offensive line a couple of years ago. Underneath, pass caught by Andy McCauley, the tight end. He barrels forward for a first down at the 20-yard line. Another 14-yard pickup, and Diabolos made the tackle. Talk about Bobby Petrino's offense. Is it an offense that demands the quarterback to be a rushing threat or just the rushing game to be strong? I think the, the rushing game to be strong. Brian Brom will take over next year. He'll, he'll give you a little bit of that, but he's going to hurt you with his eyes, his vision, and handing the football to getting his team in the right play. Michael Bush is a solid running back behind him to the 14. Looks like the ground caused that fumble, and that's what's ruled by our ACC officiating crew. We saw Petrino and his opposite number, Dan Hawkins. We haven't had a chance yet because of the Petrino job situation to talk about Dan Hawkins, what a job he has done at Boise State, a very short period of time there, and a huge impact. This program was kind of at the knocking on the door level, and he has come in after replacing Dirk Cutter, who went to Arizona State and taken Boise to even another level, 44 and 6 in four years. Yeah, Dirk Cutter had Boise State building and, and gaining a lot of momentum. And Dan Hawkins is, as Mike, you said, kind of giving him that, that second lift. Bush blocks for LaFour is inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the cards at the 7. I mentioned all the Mr. Kentucky football stars that are on this team. Michael Bush was the 2002 Mr. Kentucky football. He's a blocker here. Well, that's the thing that I really love about these running backs is they're unselfish. They're willing to do these kind of things. It's a little thing, but Bush, nice block, LaFue to the inside, the offensive tackle, hooks his man to give the quarterback a running lane. When you have three backs, Shelton, Lionel Gates, and Michael Bush all sharing the duties, you might think that somebody's going to get a little bit impatient and want the football. These guys are willing to do whatever it takes to help this team succeed. J.R. Russell, the top receiver, is the lone one spread out. LaFour's good on play action. Picks up a block and throws. Touchdown! The tight end, Gary Barnage, catches his fourth of the year. Barnage got only seven balls all season. And the true freshman's taken four of them into the end zone. LaFour stays into hole for the freshman, Arthur Carmody, 73rd consecutive extra point. The good kick return by Douglas put him in position. Five plays, 48 yards, and the freshman out of Florida, Gary Barnage with a touchdown. All right, Gary, 7-3 Cardinals. <laughs> Gary Barnage finds the end zone for Louisville. There you go, true freshman, he's got it figured out. Stay quiet, a little show of force there for the team. <laughs> Next to his uh, fellow tight end, Andy McCauley. Took a minute 40 to answer the Liberty Bowl record 48-yard field goal that Jones hit for Boise with a touchdown. Zarelli is the kickoff man and short Chris Carr back forward for Boise a good return man who's been out of the lineup the last six weeks nice return to the 34 yard line for Carr three man rush for third and long Zabransky out of the pocket runs out of bounds gained only three nobody open downfield and Boise will punch for the first time. There's nobody open downfield because Louisville rushed three guys and got in within two seconds. You can't allow that to happen. Tuberville right now is having a field day along with Marcus Jones from the outside. They have too much quickness on the edge right now for Boise State's offensive line to deal with. Montrell Jones, 10.6 average, awaits Kyle Stringer. Second team all-whack kicker. Snap ballooned back there. Kick balloons downfield. Jones from the 20. 
Well, an 11-yard return for Montrell to the 31. A net of 42 because it was a nice 53-yard kick by the sophomore from Humble, Texas. Touchdown in the last drive. Great balance from the fours in the Louisville offense. Back at it when you come back. First down for LaForce in the cards. LaForce scans the field and finds the first down. Staying on his feet is Russell to the 14. Now yeah, pick up of 19 and first down picked up by the graduated senior out of Tampa, Florida. Great shot of mom. Very excited for her son right now. What great vision and patience by LaFour is there. People want to say, well, he's not tall enough for the NFL. He's six feet, 200 pounds. He doesn't have the size. Well, if you go by what he has upstairs and you go by his heart, the courage that he has, and right there he showed you great patience sitting in that pocket on third down. LaFour's intercepted. Andy Avalos, his second interception of the year. A convoy for Avalos, picking up blocks. from Boise Oops. the Broncos on top in surprising fashion well, Andy Avalos the captain he's a four year starter he's two time all conference player love how he just looks into the eyes of the quarterback that's great instinct by Avalos to make a big play for Boise State and it couldn't have been at a better time and how about the athletic ability to take it all the way to the house for the Broncos Boise State with the second longest interception return in school history officially credited as 92 yards for Andy Avalos. still easily the Liberty Bowl record which once belonged to Michael Jordan Jordan had records in everything as the Michael Jordan of Tulane who did it to BYU here in 1998 all this hype about the offenses and how many points are going to be scored? Who would have thought it would be Boise's defense and then a, a muffed punt by Louisville to set up the points? Again, trying to pin Douglas in the corner. That time it goes out of bounds, so Louisville will take over at its own 35. We had a chance to visit with Andy last night, finishing off his career. And he said the beauty of this season and part of the fun has been we're no longer the little nuance and fun guys who play on the Smurf turf out in Idaho somewhere. People have seen a lot of us and they believe that we play good football. Our defense would like to prove that tonight. A little razzle dazzle on the reverse. Harry Douglas. Oh, folks, he's got a bunch of blockers and a lot of green in front of him. Goodbye, Harry Douglas. Touchdown, Louisville, 65 yards. So sitting down right now, Miami Beach says, great team's answer. St Stephon LaForce got oh, wow. blown up. He sacrificed his body in a big way to open that up for Harry Douglas. Extra point banged home by Carmody, an NCAA record 74 in a row in one season. LaForce's wife and mom, reason to be happy now. His son took a shot. But it helped Louisville with their responsorial hit. I'm just glad to see he has his mouthpiece in because he took a big shot by a guy running full speed. But Douglas, who was involved in the big return earlier by a kickoff return, this time finds the crease and takes it all the way. Oh, Stephon LaFour's Andy Smith, freshman. And look at him. He said, I'm just going to sit. I think I'll sit this one out. Mouthpiece is in. Good job. This is like New Mexico yesterday against Navy. Oh. How about that drive? Un what was it, 26? 26 plays? 95 yards, 14 minutes, 26 Middle seconds. Middle. Chris Carr. Across the 20. 
out to the 31. Look, folks, we're looking for a snap under 10 yards, okay? Can somebody come up with that for us? Nice return by Carr. They wear those things so the helmets don't slide around in their heads. Dominant for Louisville. Controlling the ball thus far. So Branch gets the takeoff and he's dropped down. That will not be a sack. It'll be officially no game, but Elvis Dumerville at uh, Jackson High School in Miami brings him down. Like the big area that they're going to have to adjust is when Louisville brings the pressure from the outside linebackers from the outside. A. Brown is 6'4", 225 pounds. Brandon Johnson, 6'5", 210. When they bring them from the outside to go along with Jones and Dumerville, it's just too much size and athletic ability right now for Boise State's offensive line. They're getting overwhelmed. End of quarter number one. Dominant by Louisville. 23 plays, 180 yards. LaFour's in the cards. Up four after one in Memphis. How bad do you want it? Both of these teams desperately want to close the season in the top 10, not just for the record of 2004, but for where they'll start 2005. Liberty Bowl record in the opening frame of 24 points. The Boise, we feel some work to do here. Third down to start quarter two. Jared Zabransky, two drives and James incomplete. Intended for his wide receiver, so Antoine Harris and the rest of the Louisville offense get Zabransky off the field again pretty quickly. Boise State, team that has to have balance first quarter they weren't able to establish the running game and that's the thing that they have to do to set up their pass they're not an offense Mike that wants to just sit back in the pocket on third and long and be able to be effective they have to get something from the running game on trail Jones awaits the Kyle Stringer punt good 53 yard effort last time around what a good kick taking it on the nice hop is Jones the 46 yard line. Bobby Petrino has a lot of weapons here on this team, including the speed of players like that. That return was 18 yards. Not only was he Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky in 2003, respected offensive minds have said, I've never seen a high school quarterback this good. Kirk, he had the guy in front of him this year, LaForce, be first team all conference. As the backup quarterback, he was the rookie of the year in the league. I've never heard of anything like that. I learned my lesson when he walked into the Orange Bowl with his team trailing and let him down to a score. From the 30, the brother of Louisville legend Jeff Brown. Adds to his own! Touchdown, Broderick Clark! There is the quarterback coach, Jeff. Happy for his offense, happy for his little brother. Life is good for Louisville. <laughs> Brian Brom comes in and shows America that next year, hey, Big East Conference, the guy in red wearing number 12 will be the best quarterback in that conference, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Amazing player. Arthur Carmody for the 75th consecutive time, his whole college career, perfect on the extra point. <laughs> Coming off the bench in the middle of a shootout. Let me just go three for three for 42. No problem. Bangy off 30 to the junior, Broderick Clark. I might pay a million dollars to have this head coaching job next year. With that guy. I did like. <laughs> the quick strike cards getting it done. 21 to 10. Brian Brom with a touchdown pass. Well, we, we kind of warned you about his abilities. I'm just so impressed with his poise and understanding for a true freshman, looking into the coverage, making a great throw downfield to Broderick Clark, but also look how balanced he is in the pocket. And I think when you talk about the great ones, there's a, a presence in the pocket, sets up, delivers downfield. It's, it's like he's been bred to be the quarterback at this level and then eventually in the NFL. And there's his father, who's obviously excited. Imagine the... Pops, you got his brother on the sideline as a quarterback coach. And by the way, Stefan LaForce, now you know why we're so impressed with the way he's able to block out Brian Brom and all that ability this year. Nice job by Carr to take it on the run, get past the kicker, and take it out to the 44 yard line. From the 42, the small back, Lee Marks is in. Marks, nice juke to make this a positive play. 
take it out to the 37 yard line. Jill Arrington. Well, Mike Coach Hawkins is known as the Zen Master. He uses Zen theories in his motivational speeches to the team. And in pregame, I asked him, he gave me some tidbits of what he used for this bowl game. Listen to this. He said, it's all about the art of body control. You've got to control your own sphere of existence, and to control yourself is to know the way. I said, what does that all mean? He said, just listen to my philosophies. Use what you've learned all season long. Take control of your body and just let it go. Play without the fear of losing. So it looks like that's what they're trying to do right now, guys. Yeah, Jill, I hope everybody saw the piece on Dan Hawkins on College Game Day this morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Really give you a feel for why this program has worked beyond the X's and O's. March takes it out to the 35-yard line. Lucky to get about a yard or so on that carry. Brandon Johnson once again on the tackle. Sometimes we kid about that. Oh, the Zen master and all. But you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to get his Boise State players to just relax. Cut it loose. Don't feel the pressure. Stay focused on the little things that matter. And the big things will come. And uh, his team's been down this year. Seven of the 11 football games that they've played this year, they have trailed. So I know they're playing the best team they've seen all year, but at least it's familiar ground for Boise State. They know how to fight back and get into football games. Schumann, the tight end who made the big third down play, just came to the near side, the end of the line. A run for Zabransky, blown up in the middle, thus it's done. Bobby LaFew, the graduated senior out of Danville, Kentucky, made the first initial part of his play to force fourth down at about two and a half. All I want you to do is watch the line of scrum. You can see the push. The fuse getting all the defensive linemen. Stanley Jones, Tumerville, or Doomerville, getting a push against Boise State. And Zabransky, as talented as he is, and the skill players that Boise State has, there's nothing you can do when you have a defender in your face right as soon as the ball is snapped. They've got to do something to slow Louisville down somehow, some way. Fourth and three. Oh, wheel route. They're going to hit it with Schumann, the tight end, inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. There was a little bit of confusion of Louisville recognizing getting in the right spot, and Hawkins and Boise beat him for 22 yards. Well, again, Louisville's going to bring pressure, but Abe Brown gets confused and gets lost right here. This is his responsibility. He got a little bit confused with, what he, should I come on the blitz? Should I sit back and defend? That's a great job of execution by the coaching staff and, of course, by Zabransky to find his favorite target again, at least on this drive, Schumann, the tight end, coming out of the backfield. Schumann, a good-looking sophomore tight end, isn't he? Oh, man. Great athlete. First and ten, boys, he really needs one here. They go to T.J. Aker inside the five. First and goal for the Broncos inside the two. Boise State, one of the five undefeated this year in Division 1A, and the first of the five to try to complete that uh, very sacred thing in college football, a perfect season. First and goal, Jones was helped off the field. The handoff for the touchdown. Let's see if it's going to be down. Yes, it is a touchdown by Brad Lau, the fullback. So the running back was taking it in, and Helmendaller, who's their big touchdown man, and it bounces right to Lau, the starting fullback, for the score. They needed something good to happen. Boy, that was good. Yeah, they needed to catch a break here, and they were able to do that. But it was also a big drive. I mean, they, they hit some big third downs. They had the fourth down throw. They caught a break there. But the, the drive here, along with the interception by Avalos, two crucial play moments in this game for Boise State. Tyler Jones adds the extra point. Well, Johnny on the spot was Brad Lau. He ran one in this year. That one was a very important touchdown. 21-17, not even halfway through the second. Well, the players have had a chance uh, to enjoy a little bit of Beale Street, a little bit of the Blues, a little bit of Memphis feel. Beale Street's great. If you've never been here, it's kind of the Blues, barbecue, a couple of beers. It's uh, one of those neat places. Nine plays at 56 yards for the touchdown. Their first three possessions, they had 24 yards of total offense. And then finally, that final drive, 
are able to punch it in with a 56 yard drive. But you'd still be worried worried about Boise's offense because they haven't done what they usually do to be productive. Yeah they like to run the football to set up their offense but I think what maybe they're trying to do right now make some adjustments try to make Mike Cassidy and the Louisville defense change their philosophy a little bit and then maybe that will allow them to get back to what they like to do in running the ball. Harry Douglas fumbled the football. Boise hit the first shot at it. A lot of funny stuff at the bottom of the pile. Who's going to come out with the football? ACC crew separating them. A lot of white jerseys at the bottom of that initially. Boise's yeah. got the ball in hand. And they'll take over at the Louisville 18. Well, when, when you're getting very little production initially from your offense, you've got to catch some breaks and have some things happen to stay in the game, and that's what's happened right now for Boise State. Change of momentum. They score a touchdown with a nice drive. Suing kick off the fumble with a big hit. There's a different bounce right now to Boise State in this football game, and this is a pivotal drive to finish this thing off after getting such a big break with the turnover. I believe it was Tim Volk who caused it. He went by so fast it was hard to pick up, but the Cardinals, look so good about protecting the ball, have lost a couple. Here, here we are, first and ten for Zabransky. Hit as he threw for Avery. He's got it. Touchdown, Boise. Defense is championships, I know that, but you know what? It's just fun. It's just fun to see a competitive game after the first two ball games. <laughs> two touchdowns in 14 seconds. Zabransky's hit his last four. He was hit by Bobby LeFew, but put it up there. TJ Avery, their top receiver, hauled it in. Broncos on top. Well, Boise State, they can't run the ball. They have 99 total yards, 10 on the ground. If they had 24 points and are on top by three, T.J. Akery, the former walk-on, who has molded himself out of Pocatello, Idaho, into first-team all-WAC, comes up with the grab. His eighth on the year. It was pretty good. 14 points in 14 seconds. That'll help you. Oh, boy. Fumble ball into the end zone. Fumble kickoff. Boise back on top. Harry Douglas, another chance. Douglas brought down at the 23 yard line. It's a team game, but individual effort gets it done. Boise State feels when they can get Acre in one on one opportunities, he's going to win that battle. Nice double move. That's Louisville's best cover, man. That's one on one man coverage. They brought a blitz, and Acre beats Antoine Harris. And it was great toughness there by Zabransky. Coming off the play action, Frank Lafue gets into his knees, throws the football downfield right into the hands of Acre. So now they've gone from up to down. Brian Brom comes in and can stay in for the second drive. LaFour stays on the bench. Do you like that? I, I personally, what do we know? I'd go back to the veteran, but Brian Brom has been in these kind of situations before and delivered. So they're going to stick to their own game plan. From the 22, it's first down. It's Brom looking for another home run shot. Incomplete. Just a step out of the reach of J.R. Russell. As a quarterback, as LaFour's, you're in rhythm. The offense is going. Brown didn't do anything wrong. He was perfect on his drive. Then the defense gave up one, and special teams turned it over. So it's not like Brown was at fault for no. the lead going away. No, no, not at all. If I'm a senior, and right. it's the quarterback, people say, ah, we rotate the receivers and the linemen. Why don't we rotate the quarterback? It's, I don't buy that. That's bull. The quarterback takes ownership of the team, and when it comes to this, you want to be the guy out there to lead your team. Shotgun snap from Winter Raverton. Third down throw is intercepted. The deflection. Here comes Gerald Alexander to the 12. Remember, it was 21 to 10 with Louisville starting to pull away from.
for Boise when I said Boise State has been here. They've trailed seven of 11 games. They know how to keep their composure. They've caught some breaks, but they also expect to. That ball bounces around. Alexander makes a big play and being able to come up with that interception, his fifth on the year. Here's a young man who struggled early getting beat and has made some adjustments and learned. And that time, opportunistic, the third turnover to keep them in this game. Second and 10 for Boise. They've let one opportunity down here slip by with no points. Zabransky designed the run. A. Brown, the strong side linebacker, chased it down from behind along with Kerry Rhodes. We have our fourth snap from the same spot in the field coming up. The thing that Louisville does a good job of is controlling things in the middle and forcing the ball to spill or bounce to the outside and the speed of the linebackers and the safeties. That's part of their game plan, and that time it worked perfectly. And Louisville has gotten pressure. Boise has been unable to get it down the field. Third and ten. Acre underneath inside the ten and the five. First and goal. P.J. Acre to the two-yard line. Five foot ten, 180 pounds. Never will understand this on third and ten, playing such soft coverage. What I like is Acre positioned his body and started the game momentum going in the other direction before the ball got to him. That's just that's just a guy who plays a lot of backyard football, who's a gym rat on the football field, knowing how to make a play. Zabransky runs option, keeping big hit. The ball never crossed the plane. Boise has both of its timeouts remaining. 38 seconds left. No sense of urgency to use them here. See how good Zabransky was down there running it. Hmm. Taking their time here. They'll run this play. If they don't get the touchdown call timeout, they can run another one. Zabransky, quick count, sneaks it over the top. Touchdown. been spending so much time talking about LaFours and Brom. We haven't had a chance to really get into Zabransky and everything he has meant to this team this year. And it's a first-year starter. And in this football game, to maintain his poise as his team got down. And that was a couple big plays there by Zabransky. First game to the LSU. Extra point is good. 31-21. That's interesting. 21 unanswered points from Boise State. They've gone from down 11 with nine minutes left in the half to up 10 as they take it into the locker room. And as Boise State waits down there, Jill is tracking down Dan Hawkins. Hey, Coach, you've been able to capitalize on all the turnovers from Louisville. You haven't really established your running game. What about that in the second half? Well, we definitely have to get that going. Unfortunately, we missed the scoring opportunity down here. And Probably should have had seven more points, but the fake wasn't good. But, uh, you know, we knew it would come down to turnovers, but we have to get the running game going. And, Coach, all the momentum changes in this game, is this the kind of game that your team can step up for? Well, we're kind of used to it. We have a lot of games like this, so our guys are definitely used to it. All right, Coach, thank, thank you so you. much. Mike? All right, we've had a reverse for a touchdown, a fake field goal, a fake punt at your own 20. Oh, then we have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven touchdowns in the first half. What's next? Who knows? That was quite a halftime show from Little Richard, matching the uh, show that we've seen in the first half of the 2004 AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Welcome back to Memphis. Mike Tirico, Kirk Herbstreit, and Jill Arrington as we get set for the third quarter. Louisville so good in margin of turnovers, best in their conference. Turned it over three times. Turned into 14 Boise points immediately on that Andy Avalos touchdown. However, Louisville's offense with some tricks, some razzle-dazzle, and their good passing game were an equal part contributor into the highest scoring first half in Liberty Bowl history. However, Boise scored the final 21 points. Led by Zabransky, good field position. That's how we are at 31-21. 
as we get set for the third quarter. Boise is 30 minutes away from completing a perfect season. Four teams will have an opportunity to finish that way. Obviously, the winner of the FedEx Orange Bowl will not be, or the loser will not be, undefeated. Kirk, six first downs in the entire first half for Boise, yet they lead by 10. Why? Great example of uh, how important the small things, catching breaks, getting turnovers, winning uh, an area that sometimes doesn't always show up in the, in, uh, the stats and the next morning in the box, box score. I think the key here is how Louisville comes back now to start this second half. They are a third quarter football team. They've made great adjustments throughout this entire year. They've got to continue with that trend, get themselves to regain their confidence that right now Boise State is completely taken away over the course of the second half of the second quarter. There you see the numbers, just 23 rushing yards, and rushing yards are so important for both offenses, which are high powered and high profile, and the rest of the field possession game. At one point, the guys made right after halftime in the studio, and I thought it was a very good point regarding Mike Bush and the fake punt that Louisville made. Those are one of those decisions probably you would not see any time but in a bowl game. Sure. Down at your own 20 going for a fake punt. All the reasons why it didn't work, Trevor Mark spelled out exactly right. I think just to add to that, in a bowl game, you do those things because you're kind of letting it all hang out. It's sending a message to your team that we are here to win these games. From the five, Bona Bakun to kick off return, and he's taken down the special teams play by Matt Sanders, and here's Jill Arrington down on the floor of the Liberty Bowl. Well, Mike, I asked Coach Petrino about that call on the fake punt, and he said it's a call that had worked for him during the year, but tonight was a stupid call, so he regrets that. But I also asked about his altercation with J.R. Russell, if we'd see him, what his status was in the second half. He goes, we need him. He's an emotional player, has been all year, but we need him tonight to make plays. He's really pleased with the way his defense is playing, but he's not pleased with the offense and their mistakes. He says we need to clean it up because we can win this game. Uh, I love his candor, too, Jill. Uh, it's part of what Bobby Trino, what is appealing about Bobby Petrino, why Auburn tried to get him last year, why uh, Florida, Notre Dame, a bunch of other schools have expressed interest, and now LSU has expressed interest the here this year. Five-yard carry to start the third quarter for Lee Marks. And, and uh, back to Reese's point at the start, how the teams who had questions about the future of their coach 0-4 to this point, from what you've been able to sense watching this first half, I get the sense Louisville's ready to play here tonight. Do you yeah. feel that way, too? Yeah, it, the only thing that you could say, boy, eh, it's J.R. Russell. It's mm -hmm. J.R. Russell's response, and Bobby Petrino handled that. It'll be interesting to see how quick he comes back, as Jill talked about. But I think their football team is ready. Boise State's just created some uh, turnovers. Hitting it hard is Lee Marks. Marks, the slasher with speed. Those three 100-yard games takes it out for a first down. The line of scrimmage has changed completely. And Mike, I'm going to go back to that 56-yard drive where Boise State came up. They converted on a few third downs. In fact, hit a fourth down. Up until that point, Louisville stopped, was stopping the run. They were pressuring Zabransky. By the time he hit his fifth step, he was being pressured. All of a sudden, since that drive, Boise State's not only gotten confident, but they're mixing up the play calling and doing a better job up front. After their first rushing first down of the night, Marks patiently waits for the block, uses the speed around the corner. That's another first down. Into Cardinal territory at the 41. Robert McHune, all-conference linebacker, finally tracked him down. I just love to see receivers willing to block and commit to that downfield on the perimeter. Anytime a back's going to be able to pick up a 10 or 15-yard gain, He's got to be able to turn and be able to rely on a guy like Lawrence Beatty to be able to pick up a block, push the defensive back towards the line of scrimmage and give a running alley for the running back marks. Nice job, Lawrence Beatty. Second and ten. Here's Zabransky underneath wide open for Beatty. Lawrence Beatty out to the 27-yard line. 13, and that's the third play on this drive to pick up double digits. Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator from Louisville, said one of the biggest things we have to do is line up. It might sound easy, but with Boise State, the multiple formations, the personnel groupings, the shifts, all the different things that they do, it's a lot to prepare for. We've had to streamline our package. We just have to make sure we line up and get to the right place, and that time they struggle. Lee Marks runs to the 25, a gain of three yards. It's kind of weird to hear a defensive coordinator say we have to streamline our package coming into a bowl game. There's so much time, you're usually adding the extra wrinkle or two to your season-long package. That's when we talk to these coaches, and they, you know, you get into keys, and you talk about different aspects of the football game. 
Mike Cassidy, is, again, as a defense coordinator, said we just we got to line up. Third and seven. Here's play action. Zabranski is a good runner in his own right. Draws him. Throws it. Can he stay in bounds? No. Out of the back of the end zone. Well, now they're going to talk about it. Yes, he was. Oh, That's oh, the right oh, call. Right where oh, oh, Mike Tarinko. I was with you on that. Chris Christopher in the back. Just couldn't get a toe down. But Louisville right now, it, it almost... They, they're on their heels, they're looking around, and it's to the credit of Dan Hawkins and Chris Peterson for the way they're attacking right now. Watch this. It looked like, yeah, way out of bounds. How the officials came together, made sure of the call. ACC officiating crew, Tyler Jones hit the first one. Remember the uh, fake on the second one. This one from 42. It back in and it's good. So to go with that Liberty Bowl record 48, a 42 yarder. We've seen some great kickers here the last couple bowl games we've done. Newton won the Groza Award from Ohio State. That man was one of the three finalists for the Groza. Boise by 13. The land of Elvis here in, Boy in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I love that sign from the Boise folks. Sorry, we're so offensive. They've had a good time. They've made a long journey. Obviously, not as many as the Louisville fans. Louisville being much closer. Boise is 1,880 miles from here. We're still coming to see if their team can close out its best season in Division 1A. Tough hit on the return by Harry Douglas. So, Stefan LaForce in the Louisville offense. 24 0 run by Boise State. Volley the tight end comes back to be the lead blocker on a backer. Now the force is looking deep. Humphrey is there and see complete as he had to get rid of it before Gary Barnage the tight end. Could come open. Barnage caught a touchdown back in the opening quarter. Part of slowing down a great player and a quarterback that is so accurate throwing the football is getting him out of rhythm and showing him multiple looks. And what looked down at this secondary Mike you talked about how the defensive line sometimes they're standing sometimes they're down they're trying to disguise different looks and they're doing anything they can to try to mess with the rhythm here it is again with the quarterback and the pass protection of the offensive line <laughs> one guy in his hand on the ground that time LaFour is caught coming back for the ball we'll see where four progress is marked for Jones he's going to be shy of the first down the third and one coming up Right in front of Gerald Alexander, the sophomore corner out of Rancho Cucamonga. So they are determined to make this Louisville offense drive the length of the field. They don't want to give them up the big play. Man coverage this time was soft corner. Receiver tried to take it right to the first down marker, and the ball brought him back short by a yard. On third and short, Brown, great ball fake. Wide open, the tight end, McCauley. First down and more. McCauley's still going. He stayed in bounds all the way to the 14. A gain of 27 yards. But if Peyton Manning or Chad Pennington happen to be watching, they're very happy to see there are some quarterbacks at the college level that could do this. Take your time, sell it, and then wait for McCauley to clear. This is a great job. Every time I see Peyton Manning do this, I just love it because the, the defense gets locked into defending the run, and I love the effort by McCauley. Yeah. This guy's going downfield. He's not going out of bounds. Takes it all the way down to the 14-yard line. Louisville needing one. Open in the flat. Russell. Louisville getting one. Touchdown, Carr. Did this play look familiar, Mike? Yes. We just talked about getting J.R. Russell isolated in one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's the exact same play. Trying to keep a safety on J.R. Russell. Cam Hall barely is in the picture because he can't stay with J.R. Russell, the speed of J.R. Russell. And it's great to see Russell back on the field in the second half doing what he should do as a senior. 76 for 76, Arthur McCarmody, the freshman. Five straight drives, Louisville didn't cross midfield. They did on the last drive, and it came up dry. But that drive was eight plays, 81 yards. LaForce ran it, he hit it, and he threw it on the mark. J.R. Russell to the house. Six-point game at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. At the Liberty Bowl Stadium, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, J.R. Russell 
punished in the first half, getting redemption here in the second half. You were with us earlier. Russell came off with uh, words with his coach after a pass that Brian Brom, the second string quarterback, threw was intercepted. Pass was not exactly on the mark. Russell kind of gave up a little bit on the route. He was very demonstrative, and his coach said, "Okay, fine, you sit down." Set the rest of the half. Came back. Scores to make it a six-point game. Chris Carr. Oh wow! Real call back by Preston Smith, the right chair freshman linebacker. That looked like a cartoon. Come here, sit down. <laughs> so the cards made the six-hour drive. Uh, many of their fans from 384 miles away in Louisville, down here to the southwestern corner of the state of Tennessee, right above the Mississippi border. And there's Boise out there, also the southwestern part of the uh, state as well. 1880 mile, miles from here to the state capital. School that was founded in 1932. Won a national championship in 1AA in 1980. They've only been in Division I since 96. And here they are trying to complete a perfect season tonight. So Bransky wants the big ball. Coverage good. Incomplete. Intended for Batty. Antoine Harris. Knocked it away. Second and 20. Good rush off the edge. Zabratsky's throw could not be pulled in by Schumann, the tight end. Third down coming up. Believe it or not, I, I like I like to see Zabransky here come back. He comes all the way back to the other side to his third receiver. This is the area that he's improved the most. I know the ball was thrown high, but he does a good job there. It's an area that he's grown probably the most as a sophomore. Patience in the pocket. He's an athletic young man who has had to learn patience in the pocket. That time he demonstrated it. He just put the ball a little bit too high. Cards fans loud. Third and 20. Three-man rush. This has given them problems. Still, they flush Zabransky, who only runs for a yard. Terrific job by the Louisville defense. And now their fans become a bigger factor. Mike, if I were Mike Cassidy, this defensive coordinator, I might just rush three every time. That three-man rush is giving the offensive line fits. Montero Jones has taken a punt return back for a touchdown already this year. Stringer's kick 35 yards. Jones from midfield returns at five. They'll take over in Boise territory at the Bronco 45. Mike Bush the carry. Mike Bush up the gut. 15 first down yards to the 15. Mr. Football in Kentucky in 2002. He was part of the quarterback battle. They thought he was going to be the quarterback and keep the floors on the bench a couple of years ago. You know, the game that was on before us, Music City with Minnesota, we talked with the great running backs that they have. You talk about Auburn with Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams. But in Louisville, with Eric Shelton at 206, 250 pounds, Michael Bush, 6'3", about 248 pounds. Great combination, and Michael Bush right now has the hot hand. Tiger Jones, one of the three receivers in the game. Bush is the back. The throw is hauled in by Broderick Clark inside the 10. Spinning to the six-yard line. Right in the first down the line. <laughs> Louisville has got a little attitude right now. It's the magic of momentum and how much it can change the complexion of a football game. Right now, Louisville's been able to maintain that throughout the entire third quarter. And you can feel the energy from up here. I can, Jill, I'm sure downstairs can feel it. We can sense it from up here. All the red shirts that are here in the stands are affecting this football game right now, and they're feeling a touchdown for Louisville. Second and a yard, Shelton over the five, carrying pads popping out to the two-yard line. If it's a lineup and smack him in the mouth game, in the second half, that's kind of the cards type of game. Watch this. This is what this is what Shelton can provide for you. Michael Bush, 
when you think about what he can offer, he's not only the size, but he's very nimble. He has great feet. Shelton, the transfer from Florida State, has the power. Given to the first back. And Colby Smith is stopped at the one. Jared Hunter, the sophomore from Santa Cruz, California, is in there in the linebacker spot. And a couple of second teamers on there on the defense right now for Boise State. If you're wondering why Colby Smith, after all the talk about the tailbacks, might be carrying the football, he might be the most talented all around bat they have. Second and goal, cards try to pound it in up to the top. Did he break the plane? No signal that he did. I think Smith is shy there. Stop he is. The Third down coming up. Boise trying to come up with a goal line stop here. Andy Avalos, the interception for TD earlier. I got to defer to my mentor here, Lee Corso, who loves to see the lead blocker when you get down into this situation. I know he's down in Florida, in Miami right now saying, where's the tailback? Where's the tailback? the lead blocker. Power to the tight end. Fake. Anybody breaking open in the back? Or LaFour's running. Touchdown, Stefan LaFour. Carmody's made all 76 extra points this year. Make it 77. I mean, is this a great day of football or what? How good was that Bama Minnesota battle? Now we're putting up big numbers here. Miami and Florida to follow. LaFour is from a yard out. Wife and mom happy. His team back up one. They have been a third quarter team all year. 160 to 42 in the regular season. And adding to it with 14 to 3 thus far here in the third at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Returnable for Mark Odebaku. Bouncing to the outside, the receiver and quarterback delivered a blow as he took it across the 40 yard line. From the 42 yard line, Lee Marks again. A oh, nice move there by Marks. Cut it back inside to get to the 36. We talked to Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator on the field, and other Louisville coaches, and they were thinking the same things that we were thinking. They look quick against everybody they play, but speed never translates off film to the naked eye. And I go back to Oregon State, sure. and Fresno, and Hawaii, the best teams they played this year. Speed-wise, they hung with those teams. Well, I ask you this, did, did Louisville take a back seat to Miami that night they played them from a speed standpoint? Nope, not at all. Plus, you can make the boys of State comparison the best teams. They don't have necessarily players maybe at that level, but I'm talking just quickness Absolutely. and speed. They're, they don't have to they don't have to settle for anything. Off we go to the fourth. One point game. I'm sure many are getting all spiffed up for your New Year's Eve celebrations. Make sure you hang around the TV for the next 45 minutes or so. Head towards a fantastic finish here, perhaps, and the Miami-Florida game to follow in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Quarter four begins. Boise State down one. Louisville shows Brits. Brings blitz. Sobranski goes the other way. Carpenter. Got about the one yard line. A pickup of seven on the play. You know, last time they went for it on fourth down. It'd be very interesting to see what they do if they are forced to possibly try a field goal here with Tyler Jones. Where Tyler Jones made a 48 yarder. However, the win has been steady all night and would be hurting the kick by Jones heading left to right on your TV. A southerly wind blowing through Memphis this evening. Need at least five yards probably to feel comfortable with a field goal. Third and nine. Good pass in the middle. Bryson James, they try to steal the ball from the sophomore, but he holds on for a first down at the 19. First catch of the night for James. They've thrown at him a few times. 
Look at, this, look at this defense from Louisville. They've got linebackers dropping in coverage. They've got a defensive end dropping off the line of scrimmage and a zone blitz. And one of the things that hurts you if you, on a zone blitz, Mike, if you don't get the pressure, is you leave yourself a lot of openings in that secondary with people that aren't athletic and athletic enough to cover downfield. And that time, Boise State made a good throw and a nice completion. They love Schumann, the tight end down in this area. From the 19, here is Zabransky. Out of the backfield. Jones takes it to the 11 to pick up the bait. Jared Zabransky. Zaney off the field, his teammates say. Hard to find on the field because of his scrambling and his good throwing. It is last four passes now. Well, he's also, we've talked about the fours and what he can do. Zabranski is a guy that is a threat to run the option down inside the red zone as well. In fact, they love his athletic ability down in this area. Lee marks the lone back. Has it. Puts it to the right. Looks like he's going to pick up the first down. As he comes across the eight, as they unpile it, check it out. Here's Jill Arrington. Well, Jared Zabransky got his work ethic from his father, who came down with the West Nile virus and was in the hospital for several months. So Jared had to run the family without him. He said it was really hard to see his dad down like that because he's always been his role model, teaching him about hard work. But you know what? His dad is doing fine. He is back on the farm. He's driving the truck. He's probably watching the game today, guys. I'm sure he is. A 1,500-acre family farm. Where Jared ran the piler, loaded the potato truck, even drove it where he learned how to drive. Ran a wing T offense in high school. Run a very diverse, good offense now. First and goal, Marks had a good rushing second half. His hat came off as he got down to the six. Most impressive thing, Mike, about Sobranski is that last year, Ryan Dinwiddie. It's the best passer in school history. Threw for over 4,300 yards. This, this offense only returned three starters that had a lot of experience. We thought, boy, they're going to take a step back. They've changed some things. Last year, they averaged 336 yards a game through the air. This year, with a more athletic Zabransky, they've changed things and become more physical and more balanced because of his athletic ability. Schumann in motion. Play 14 in the drive. The tight end blocks as they run it to the right, down to the two with Joel Helmendaler. Helmendaler only carried 43 times this year, but he scored 13 touchdowns. Tells you what they think of him inside the 10. Dan Hawkins said, you know, this year we wanted to become more physical. They had to become more physical in situations like this, willing and able up front to dominate people. They practice that way, and they take pride in that. Quick snap, Helmendaler to the corner, going forward, is he in? Touchdown! 40 to 35, they should go for two here. And they will. Boise State this year, 0 for 2, going for 2. Both were in passing situations. The play clock is down at 11 as it comes in from the sideline. So they're going to have to go quick count here. Zabransky, very cool. For their first two of the year. Thrown and incomplete, but they will not get the two-point conversion. So it remains 40 to 35. But Boise State on top with the fourth lead change of the night. Uh, these uh, proud Boise State fans see their team go on top by five. They missed the two, but back to the touchdown by Hellman Dollar. They've been showing this. Zabransky this time call from Dan Hawkins. Let's get to the line quick. Look at the confusion in red. Guys aren't even lined up yet. The ball snapped. They're running all over the place. Hellman Dollar says, thank you very much. And you can see Louisville's defense looking around even after he went into the end zone, kind of saying, what? You thought, what? What's going on? Do over. We weren't yeah. ready. <laughs> right. Right. Well, Hellman Dollar is not going to be confused with that Mike Vick play he made on that Saturday night a few weeks ago on ESPN against Carolina, staying parallel to the ground before he crossed the plane. But he did a nice job to keep himself up there. Roger Clark comes back for a kickoff return. Great in this role last year. Well covered by Boise. First and 15 after the flag. 
Here is Michael Bush. Takes it shy midfield. We're talking about Dan Hawkins, the Boise coach, and Jill Arrington can add. Well, another one of the theories that he has is bigger isn't better, better is better. And he tells this to his team. He says, guys, it doesn't matter where you are. Don't worry about getting to the next level. Enjoy where you are now and be better where you are. Do your best at whatever level you are. But I think these both of these teams right now are showing wherever you are, they can be the best. There's some great offense we're seeing out here today. Hawkins has different members. Quote from last year, Martin Luther King didn't take a knee. Gandhi didn't take a knee. Thomas Edison didn't take a knee. He got criticized for him. He was saying, you got to be a risk taker when you have confidence. LaFour is across midfield. And Dance is out of bounds here inside the 45 at the 44. It's going to be a first down where LaForce was able to stay in bounds. This time a little bit of a change here. Andy Avalos, who made the big interception earlier in the game, is spying, sitting right there. Trying to make a play on Stefan LaFors. And LaFors used uh, some good quicks to get around Avalos. Four year starter and captain of this Boise State defense. Playing some of his last snaps of college football. Wouldn't he love to walk off this field undefeated? 12 0. It's their uh, eighth year up from Division I AA. Louisville looking for its best finish ever. They've never finished the season in the top 10. Eric Shelton had nowhere to go. He gained uh, less than a yard there. Kirk mentioned earlier this young man out of Lexington came back to the Commonwealth after a trip down to Florida State. Didn't stay at Florida State because there were too many good people in front of him. Wanted to come back with the opportunity, kind of get back in good graces with the program and come back to his home state. And it's worked out well in his junior year, second team all conference this year. Eric Shelton will be back, Michael Bush, Colby Smith, a lot of unbelievable talent on this Louisville team as they get ready to go in the Big East. Of course, next year with Brian Brom as their quarterback. Bush is the back now. The sophomore who was a high school quarterback can throw, eluding two. Looks like he's back playing high school quarterback. Oh, what a play by Bush. Michael Bush, terrific play inside the 20. 24 yards. <laughs> Gosh, Michael Bush is such an athlete. Mike, we talked a lot tonight about how he's a great high school quarterback. They like to utilize him in that way. But this is why he plays tailback. When he gets into the open field, remember, this guy's 250 pounds. 250 pounds dancing around like it's nothing. And again, they say his best asset might be his quick feet. He's very nimble for being that size. That was a big play for Louisville. <laughs> Hurston intending for the Cardinals, trying to retake the lead. LaFour's play action streaking down the middle out of man wide open, comes underneath to his tight end. McCauley takes it down to the 13 yard line. Montrell Jones was getting big eyes. He was wide open, but he also was just there to, to clear the defensive backs, the safeties back, because he either was going to go to the flat, to the tight end, or to the back side to McCauley trailing to the front side to, to Colby Smith, or the tight end who was trailing from behind. And one of the reasons he comes so wide open there is because that linebacker read his keys well and knew where the play was going, so he vacated the area. Two very well-prepared teams here tonight. Second and four. Can't get the corner fully turned. Shelton will get to the 10. Well, third, about a yard and a half coming up. Ticking clock inside of eight minutes. Final quarter. Could be. Last with the ball wins tonight. Let's see. Three, four, 734 yards. Thank you, Mom, for making me do the long math. Third and five before third and two officially. With 7.45 to go. Option read, LaFour's first and goal from the six. Cam Hall, the game saving, uh, score saving touchdown tackle. This time they have trips to the field. Little fake gives LaFour's enough time 
to be able to pick up some momentum, but they first basically used their personnel all out to the field to lock, get to get the Boise State defense spread out. Most of them they had to put four guys to the outside and gave enough numbers for the Louisville offense for the fours to pick up that first down. Eric Shelton is the deep back. Cardinals trying to take the lead. Shelton, big haul forward to the one. Because Louisville has been so high powered and jumped out on people, this is what they've done in second halves. They use some of that big back and the power game to just beat people up, and they go quick in the second half, and they're able to maintain their lead. 276 yards rushing here tonight. the lead in the highest scoring Liberty Bowl ever. One point game. They should go for two here. You're probably only down to a couple of possessions. Cardinals this season one for three going for two they made the one they ran 0 for two when trying to throw for two national average 43 percent of these are converted LaFours deflected and incomplete a very nice job by the Mike linebacker Corey Hall to knock it down both teams have missed their twos and it's 41 40. LaFours in the cards on top. Boise State playing a good game and giving Louisville all they can handle. Again, what's at stake in addition for Boise trying to maintain the nation's longest winning streak for another nine months? The best finish in school history for the winner here tonight. Return by Clinton Jones, shy of the 20. Pushing and shoving here on the back end of the play. Jared Zabratsky, the Boise quarterback. Nothing there, making this up on his own. Out of bounds at the 25. Pick up the seven on the play. If you're just joining us, you heard us allude to the uh, Bobby Petrino story. Let me come back and reiterate it for you. Bobby Petrino signed a contract extension through 2010 at Louisville back on December 20th. It's a signed contract, deal done. The Louisville folks, the fan base, very unhappy because on Christmas night, the LSU athletic director called and received permission from Tom Jurich, the Louisville athletic director, to interview Petrino for the job vacated by Nick Saban. They had a brief meeting on the way down here. Lee marks the carry. Good hit by Brandon Johnson and Robert McCune, the linebackers. Third down coming up. Petrino, according to his agent who I spoke to this morning, has not had any contact with LSU since then. No job has been offered. No contract's been negotiated, according to the uh, agent. And that's where it stands right now. Will Petrino coach Louisville when they go into the Big East next, next year? Only time will tell. But best as we can tell from digging to this point, nothing is imminent of him going to LSU. Farthest thing from his mind right now. Third and three. Zabransky in trouble. Broke down. Elvis Dumerville gets there. This is great coverage downfield by Louisville. They had everybody covered. The pressure came from the inside. It didn't allow the athletics of Branski anywhere to go. That was Kyle Stringer's punt coming up. Fair catch signaled and made. As the kick of 36, Montrell Jones brings it in. Look at Bush spin. LaFour is another block. Michael Bush tripped up at the 25-yard line. Now do you know why his teammates love Stephon LaFour? Well, first, Michael Bush is taking this football game over here in the fourth quarter. He's feeling it. 
He's in a zone. How in the heck he gets out of that? And then a great effort by the quarterback to just try to slow down Gabe Franklin. Very lucky. If Frank Franklin doesn't make this play, there's a blocker there from Russell to give Chris Carr all he could handle. He probably would fight his way close to getting into the end zone. Good effort by Franklin, but nice job again by the fours of sacrificing the body to make a block to help out the running back. This now the top rusher in the game. Adds to his 90-yard total. Bouncing to the outside for seven there. That clock is going downhill real fast. The next snap will come inside of three minutes. Carr is trying to add to a one-point lead. We're going to talk a lot about Michael Bush. We're also going to talk about the offensive line helping take this game over here in the fourth quarter. Part of the game plan by Bobby Petrino was to come into this game and try to get in a position to win it in the fourth quarter by wearing down the Boise State defense. And right now, to this point, they've been able to do this here with 307 yards oh. rushing and a lot of that here in the fourth quarter. Eric Shelton now comes in the backfield, second and four. The Florida State transfer across the 15, down to the 10. This is smack it in the mouth, dominating fourth quarter football play by the Cards. These last couple drives are just symbolic of the year that Louisville has had. Yes. Looking at Michael Bush, you need a little breather. Eric Shelf, come on in, partner. <laughs> Take a few carries. Bush, get a breather. You can come back in. Mix in a little Stephon LaForge with a play action, occasionally a scramble. This is what Louisville's been able to do this year. It's tough to stay with them because of the great depth they have in that backfield. Boise State, it's one of those situations. Either stop them, let them score. This is first and goal from the 15. Option into the boundary. LaForge's got to stay in bounds. He did not. Goes out of bounds. So the advantage of that running clock is hurt there, and he knows. You and I were thinking the same thing. I was thinking he's running into the sideline, into the boundary here. He, he's going to take a knee. He's going to slide. What's he going to do? How's he going to stay in bounds? And once he went airborne, he, he was, it was over. He was going to be knocked out of bounds by Cam Hall. It was Cam Hall. Good play. But I go back to the mistake, pushing him back five yards. They want to keep running the football to keep the clock going. Boise State use those timeouts. Second and goal. Boise State has two timeouts remaining. Shelton. Stopped there at the 10. Boise should take a timeout here, and they will with a minute and 29 remaining in the game. Third and goal. Trying to stay in field goal range for sure. LaForce, they will throw it. Didn't come back on the backside. Stefan killing time. Waiting to make a play. Now Rhodes has room at the five. Dive Simon at the two. Quick timeout, Boise. It'll run down to a buck 13 remaining. Boise using its final timeout here. Well, he, the, the best thing he did there was kill about 30 seconds just dancing around, chasing, uh, having guys chase him all over the football field. But that play, what you couldn't see there, was great coverage by Andy Smith, one of the safeties, in staying with McCauley. It was the old Syracuse play, delay. All the action was going to the left. They slid their tight end on a nice delay into the right corner, and a safety, Andy Smith, just happened to catch up and see it and, and stayed with him, and that forced the fours to have to try to run for the touchdown. And he comes out for this snap because he'll be holding for the field goal attempt that could put the cards up by four and force a touchdown. Arthur Carmody, the freshman who didn't miss any extra points this year, was 11 of 13 coming in with a miss here. Good from the tough angle. The lefty pounds it in, and you know, the force by scrambling, ending up on the left, probably helped the left-footed Carmody on that kick. Zabransky is going to get the ball. Touchdown could win it. Go. Buck 10 left on the clock. Boise stayed out of timeouts. Needing to come down the field and get a touchdown to complete their first perfect season in Division 1A. They've won a Division 1 AA National Championship in 1980, played the title game about a decade later. Still, a win here tonight would be 23 in a row, take that longest winning streak on into the opener of 2005 down. Uh, down the road in Boise, but most importantly for them, it would be the biggest win that they've ever pulled off. 
as a program. We've got to do it against Louisville. Where will the field position start from? Carr takes the kickoff and is stopped at the 25. Well covered on special teams. Here's Jill Arrington. Well, the 12th men for this Boise State team are a bunch of people over in Iraq. The 116th Brigade of the Idaho National Guard, they recently were deployed to Iraq, 1,600 of them from the state of Idaho. They recently went down back in September training in El Paso and watched Boise State play UTEP. And it's support both ways, guys, because on the back of the helmets, Boise State has that battalion symbol right there. And they're watching right now in Iraq. In fact, the general called at halftime, talked to the governor who's here at the game, and said, we're watching, we're behind you, go get them. Wow. And all of us are behind all of you there. And we wish you and your families the best in 05. All right, here we go. 74 yards. Can Boise keep the perfect season alive? Zabransky throws. Caught. First down. Legadu Nani. Penalty markers down. Let's check it out. It came down in the secondary. If you were to go to a Boise State practice. Defense. With the climb. In spring, in summer, in the fall, this is a drill they're constantly working on. The catch here is the Brands many timeouts left. That'll be the challenge, is to continue to try to get out of bounds, pick up first downs, and also find the matchup that you want, which usually means number 89, T.J. Acree, Acree, in a one-on-one -on -one situation against Louisville's defensive backs. Acree's in the slot, second receiver down from the top to Zabransky's left. First and ten. Middle is open. Tight end, Schumann. What a run. Out to the 37-yard line. And they got it down here. Two snaps. That time, instead of bringing pressure, remember the rush that we talked about, Mike? Rushing three and dropping eight. It gave Boise State's offensive line fits earlier. This time, the tight end, it's one of the more athletic guys on the field at that position, makes a big catch. Zabransky in trouble, got rid of it. He was out of the tackle box. The ball came right to the line of scrimmage. The intentional grounding flag was thrown. Picking it up. There's no flag on the play. It got across the Mike, it got across the line of scrimmage by about a half a yard. It was that close. So you can understand that the referee from his angle thought it looked like it would be a Potential grounding call, but nice job of getting together there. And farther over the sideline, there was an eligible receiver yeah. named Dryson James. Out of your picture. Second and ten. Out of timeouts, 30 seconds. Zabransky coming back. No catch. Not brought in inbounds. Jones trying to drag the toe. Didn't. Third down. Again, rushing three, dropping eight, giving Zabransky time to sit in the pocket. See if they change things up this time or they try to bring pressure out of bounds. Third and ten. Third and five. Four receivers out there. Zabransky in trouble. He's brought down at the 30. Clock doesn't stop on a sack. He gained yards anyway. And it's fourth down, so they can't down it. They've got to go. There are seven people onto the field. We're down to 10 seconds left. The season comes down to this play. It might be their last play to run. It's going to be their last play to run. So here's the game. Boise for the perfect season. Zabransky, it's got to be in the end zone. He put it there. There's no receiver there. Louisville wins.
The nation's longest winning streak now belongs to USC. Bobby Petrino with Jill Arrington. Congratulations. As advertised, this was a game of momentum swings and offensive shootout. What kind of statement did Louisville say to the country today? Uh, it was just a great game. You know, it reminded me of the game we had here with Memphis. But uh, we had the ball. We were able to go down, move it, and get the field goal. Then our defense held on. And great game. Back and forth. Great offenses. Both defenses played extremely hard. And you can't say it was all that they talked about. And, Coach, what can you say about the way LaForce just kept on running this number one offense in the country? Oh, he did a great job. You know, he, you can't say enough about it. He, he was just a great competitor to be able to run the ball like he did today, make plays when things weren't there. You know, that's what he's been doing all year for us. And our team showed a lot of character being down at halftime and coming back and winning. And, Coach, for you, with all the adversity with the LSU job, all the talk all week, how was it for you to stay focused? Is this the payoff? Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt when you see your players come out and put all the effort on the line and do exactly what we're coaching them to do, you know, it, it says a great deal about our players. Well, congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thanks, Joe. Back to you, Mike. For the people out there that say the BCS is all that matters, I hope you had a chance to watch this football game and take in the energy. Two football teams that left it all on the field tonight. Great effort. Came down to who had the ball last, and Louisville's defense made the play. Happy New Year, bud. Same to you. See you on College Game Day tomorrow morning with Jill, Coach Chris, down in South Beach. Now with Jill Arrington and Kirk Herbstreit. This is Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Louisville by four. And here's Reese Davis.